Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a teratoma of the testis. And to orientate ourselves at low magnification, here we have the epididymis. And this is the testis itself with the outer coverings, the tunica albuginea and vaginalis. And this is the region of the tumor. Let's have a very quick look at the epididymis. And we can see that there are many tubules that are lined by these tall columnar cells with long stereocilia. Moving back onto low magnification, this fibrous structure here is the tunica albuginea, and this is in turn lined by the tunica vaginalis. And coming in to the testicular parenchyma, we are looking now at seminiferous tubules in which there is ongoing spermatogenesis. Now we move towards the lesional tissue, and here roughly is the edge of the tumour. And we can see that this tumour is composed of many cystic structures with some more solid areas in between. So a teratoma is a tumour that is composed of several germ cell layers. And let's take, for example, this cystic structure. We can see that this is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, and this epithelium is quite mature. It shows a granular layer, just like in the skin. And in the contents of this cyst, we can see all this flaky material, which is actually keratinous material, or anucleate squames. This material would grossly appear whitish or greyish and quite pulpy, so in the gross appearance, we will see this solid cystic tumour where some of the cysts may contain pulpy material. Let's look at another area. In this region, we can also see a cystic structure. And the lining of this cystic structure is quite different from what we saw earlier. Instead of stratified squamous epithelium, we actually have pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. And you can see very well formed cilia here. This is respiratory type epithelium. And this is derived from endoderm. The stratified squamous epithelium is derived from ectoderm. Now moving on to yet another area here, we can see that there is adipose tissue here. These are the adipocytes, which usually appear very empty with extremely compressed small nuclei. And this is derived from mesoderm. So we have tissue from all three layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Let's have a closer look at testicular teratoma. A teratoma is a germ cell tumor comprising more than one germ cell layer, as mentioned. There are two main types, the prepubertal type, which usually is indolent and it is not associated with the background of germ cell, neoplasia in situ. And then there is the more common postpubertal type, which does arise from germ cell neoplasia in situ, and this is considered malignant. It may also be mixed with other components of germ cell tumors, for example, yolk sac tumor or embryonal carcinoma. Clinically, this usually affects young adult males, 20s to 30s, and this will present as a painless firm testicular mass. Now take note that even though the names are prepubertal and postpubertal type, either one can really occur in any age group. There is a separate video describing gross features of testicular teratoma. This can be found in our free online resource, PathWeb. You can scan here to learn more, or you can also register for free. The link is in the video description. Microscopically, as mentioned, there are several tissue types present which can derive from any of the three germ cell layers. For example, skin, as we see here, or neural tissue from ectoderm, cartilage, bone, adipose tissue, which we saw. And you can see some cartilage here and adipose tissue. This is from a teratoma of the ovary, but it shows similar features. And this is mesoderm-derived. 
and there can also be endoderm-derived tissues, for example, from the gastrointestinal or respiratory tracts. And again, these images are taken from PathWeb. So teratomas can form solid or cystic areas, and here we saw in this particular case cystic structures lined by mature stratified squamous epithelium. The tissues can appear mature or immature, and sometimes even somatic type malignancies such as adenocarcinoma can arise in the background of a teratoma. In the case of post-pubertal teratomas, the background testes may show germ cell neoplasia in situ. Here are some other labeled photographs and we can see the normal testes and the teratoma here which is quite prominently cystic. And here again, the cystic structure lined by mature stratified squamous epithelium containing this flaky keratinous material. And over here, we see two other components, adipose tissue, which derives from mesoderm, and ciliated columnar epithelium, which derives from endoderm. In summary, this is a testicular teratoma, which has tissues originating from several germ cell layers. In this particular case, there are many cystic structures, this one here is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, which derives from ectoderm. And this cystic structure is lined by respiratory type epithelium, which derives from endoderm. And we also have adipose tissue, which derives from mesoderm. This particular case is an example of post-pubertal teratoma, which is more common and it can be associated with other germ cell tumor elements. And postpubertal teratomas are considered malignant with the potential for metastatic disease. Thank you.